I don't think, okay, well, I'm Jay Cutler, Mr. Olympia. My career is so much different from everyone else's. It's a job. So I just look at every day as a challenge with everything in general and not just, you know, going to the gym and lifting weights. I mean, I'm trying to run a whole empire here and, of course, trying to win competitions. But the competition phase is only for four months out of the year. The rest of the year is focusing on business and travel and guest appearances and merchandising and all that stuff. I mean, that's what I look at. I was beat up on a lot. I was taught to be really tough. What I learned quickly though, is I really didn't like the, the sports themselves because it was kind of like a group thing. And I always wanted to be kind of the individual. Mr. Jay Cutler. I had a pretty good physique as it was, even at 11, 12 years old. I was cut and I was muscular just from all the outside activity and working on the farm. I thought, wow, if I can actually make money and lift weights and develop a physique that you like, that would be the ideal. I had a plan for two years that I was going to join the gym my 18th birthday and begin my quest straight away as a bodybuilder. Like, I wanted to be a competitive bodybuilder. I kind of just spent the next month or two lifting weights, but watching people because I really didn't have any guidance on how to really train. I had very great success. I gained 50 pounds in the first six months of training. So I was doing something right. It's really cute, huh? You're really cute. And I remember telling her on our first date that I was gonna be a bodybuilder. What'd you think when I said that? Okay. She was eating a chicken sandwich. She said, yeah, she said, okay. She was like 90 pounds, you know, and I was 175. So when I joined the gym, I actually said to her, uh, you know, if you want to see me, you're gonna have to join the gym, you know. It's worth sticking with it, you know. It, t it does take a team effort. If you just have one person, I think it would be difficult for just one person alone to do everything you need to do. The struggles to get there, like I mentioned, you know, she worked two jobs. You know, we saved money together. We shared a car. You know, we shared a small place when we were very young. I mean, we moved out when we were 18, 19 years old. We were on our own. I worked for $5 an hour. I made, I worked 40 hour a week. So my paycheck was $150 a week. <laughs> we worked for everything we've gotten and I, I were, we're very grateful for everything we've earned. Hi, Amy. How are you, girl? You know, she's like bodybuilding's first lady to Mr. Olympia, you know. As soon as we moved to California, I started prepping for my first professional win that I had in 2000, Night of Champions. I bought my first house with the prize money from that show in California. We bought our first condo. You know, the success came, you know, once I turned professional, I was able to land an endorsement deal with Weeder. Yeah, here's some of the merchandise, you know, for the Cutler Athletics line, the Swole Monkey line here. What I learned slowly is that I was the most money maker of anything. All my investments, all the things I ever did, like people say, oh, you gotta buy real estate or you gotta invest in stocks and this and that. And I did all that stuff, but I pulled everything out and I reinvested it myself and I'd started the merchandising with the clothing line, the videos and books and everything, but Jay Cutler, everything. This is the most muscular crystal here. So this is an award separate from the title. I mean, I was the most muscular the first year, 02, 03 and 04, which, you know, the, the same guy that wins the title necessarily doesn't win that every year. But since I was the biggest and the most muscular, you know, each year I won not only the Hummer, the Arnold Trophy, and the check for 100000 but I also won the most muscular awards too. You know, we've been in this for so long. People follow us and know more about us than I think sometimes we do, you know, just through the magazines and the books and everything. What motivates you, you know? For me, it's like challenges that people don't think are attainable. 
people said I'd never be a professional bodybuilder and then I'd never win the Olympia and then I'd never win a second time or a third time. Hey. And then, uh, you know, I lost the title, came back and won it again. And they said, you know, I would never do that. I think you look more at history when you're retired and you're sitting back and you say, wow, what did I do? Because when you're inside living it, you don't think about it as much. You can't stop to take the time to marvel over, wow, what achievements I have. But I went into every show with the mindset that I was gonna win. I never doubted that I was ever gonna lose. You know, I, I just had to get through probably the greatest bodybuilder of all time. This was the show for 03, 04, 05, and 06 was the Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman battle. It's all, I mean, look at how they, they word it. You know, Cutler versus Coleman. I mean, it was, it was a one-two show every year. I couldn't believe it, I guess, because, you know, you, you dream about that moment for so long. But I, it was reality. I mean, it was finally done, and now I was looking to be uh, capitalize on being Mr. Olympia traveling the world as the, the world title holder. I won the title, but some people didn't think I deserved it. And some people said, well, to be a you know, dominant Mr. Olympia, you're gonna improve this or that. I didn't care about all that at that time. I just cared about winning the title. Dexter came in and beat me, you know, I, was, I, I wasn't in my top shape and, uh, you know, I took a step backwards and, and uh, he was better you know, that day, and they rewarded him for that. In this case, is silver medals only. And I keep the silver separate from the golds because this, to me, is failure. And these are the successes, and you see that empty one that's waiting for the 2011 gold right there that's empty. And that's now with the gold frames because those are my pinnacle of my career wins of those two top ones. That was 2010. And, uh, you know, I'm waiting to fill that 2011 right now. I think everyone wants to see the battle from the year prior. They're looking to see what Phil brings new and what Jay Cutler can hold off is more the sense going into this show because everyone knows you know, I'm only gonna do so much with my body. Hopefully there'll be some improvements, but the most improvements we'll see is, obviously Phil's a young guy, he's up and coming. You know, Phil and Heath and I go way back. I mean, I kind of brought him into the, the ranks. But really back then, I never thought Phil Heath would catch me to this point. It was my dream to have, be able to stand next to Phil Heath one, two. Of course, me winning, but I never thought it would take place in my time. You know, Phil has a lot of stage presence that is definitely a future bodybuilding. I'm taking him into account as much as everyone else, though, at this point. Everyone keeps asking me if I'm going to go for six after five. And I say I have to get to five before I get to six. So right now we have seven weeks to the big showdown that everyone's looking forward to. I know I'm doing everything I can in Vegas right now to secure that title and, you know, from the diet and the training to modifying different things and making different adjustments to be at my absolute best. I'm sure Phil's in Denver doing the same thing. And, uh, it's gonna be another showdown and the best man will win.